Welcome back to the LTM podcast powered by Slipstream Autosport. I'm your host, Daniel, and today we're going to be talking about the season opener of the High Tech Oils Super Series. Uh, of course, last weekend held round one uh, at Sydney Motorsport Park, and what an incredible weekend it was, full of awesome racing, so many close battles, a few crashes here and there, and last but not least, it was all under lights. Um, so it was a spectacular way to start the season. Uh, we've got a whole number of a whole heap of categories to discuss today. Um, so without further ado, let's get cracking. So starting off with the production sport category, um, unfortunately I wasn't able to get results for race two and four um, due to the broadcast um, not showing it, um, especially race four. Uh, and when I go to playback, unfortunately I couldn't get race two. So I've only been able to get race one and three. The same applies for the Super TT series and stock cars. Um, so that's next, but let's get into the production sports. So there are lots of battles. Um, great to see um, so many different types of cars too. We've got Porsches, Marks, Lamborghinis. Uh, it was fantastic to see. Uh, race one saw an epic battle for the top three. Uh, majority of um, those three cars were neck and neck all race. It was fantastic to see. But Andy Hall um, was victorious for race one um, ahead of Rodney Forbes in the, the two Porsches there. And then Nick Mantikos, um was in his Mark car. He managed to finish third in race one. And that was pretty cool. Um, fairly clean uh, throughout the whole race. Race three, however, wasn't so clean. Um, there were still some fantastic battles, um, especially up the front. Again, Mantikos got actually um, a very good start, got the early lead ahead of Andy Hall. However, unfortunately, Andy Hall um, spun Mantikos around at turn two. Um, which resulted, um, obviously, out of the podium, unfortunately, uh, which is a real shame because they were, fan they were racing hard and fantastic um, all weekend, um, so it's a shame it ended like that. However, Andy Hall technically crossed the line first, but um, I wasn't able to find out whether he got a penalty or not, so um, if you do know, let me in the comments. I would love to um, correct myself on that. But uh, So based off the race results from the broadcast, uh, Andy Hall uh, clinches the win about eight seconds clear of Rodney Forbes, uh, and then Tim Wolfe um, managed to step on the podium there for race three. Next up is the Super TT Stock Car Series. Now, these are two categories joined together. Um, and these cars are really cool, I must say. It's crazy to see some old NASCAR-like cars um, competing, uh, especially against some Pulsars and stuff. But, uh, yeah, well, racing was pretty good, um, pretty exciting. There was a safety car in the first race due to a spin. Um, but... Uh, Looking at the results here for race one and three, uh, Brett Mitchell uh, claimed the win for race one ahead of Miles Jones and Brendan Horrigan. Uh, race three also saw Brett Mitchell take the win once again ahead of Danny Burgess and Jeff Stubbs. Uh, unfortunately, like I said before, I don't have a lot of information regarding that category due to um, the broadcast issues, and I wasn't able to find anything about it, unfortunately. Um, but it was a fantastic category nonetheless. Next category is Legend Cars Australia. Now, this category was incredible. The amount of, the amount of epic racing we had across the weekend was sensational. Um, so many close battles, and especially um, the final straight. Every time, um, you'll be just on your seat trying to work out who's going to win, because it, even if the leader was heading into the final corner, didn't guarantee that they'll win. Um, the slipstream was nuts. And speaking of slipstream, um, slipstream motorsports Ryan Pring, see what I did there? That was kind of neat. Um, did pretty well for slipstream and the Legends series. Uh, we'll get into his results shortly. But um, uh, race one saw um, victory for Lockie Ward ahead of Shane Tate and Robert Hogan. Uh, race two was still non-stop action with Robert Hogan being able to clinch the win this time around ahead of Slipstream Autosports' uh, Ryan Pring and, and then Lockie Ward. Race three, uh, another epic finish. And by the way, I just want to point out, a lot of these races, right, the gaps between first and second was less than a tenth. That's that's what I'm talking about, about the, um, the Slipstream. It's, it's crazy. There was a 0 0.053 gap between Billy Finnegan and... And Ryan Pring. Unfortunately for Ryan, oh, he, he did so well in race three and only to lose it at the line. It's It just shows how close the field is and how epic the racing is. Um, it's fantastic. But he did very well to finish second nonetheless. And Lockie Ward was able to claim third for that one. 
Race four, um, another tight finish. <laughs> 0.043 gap this time around between Lockie Ward and Shane Tate. And then Billy Finnegan rounded up the podium there. Slipstreams, Ryan Pring finished sixth for that one. And then the final race of the weekend for them, Finnegan managed to beat Ward to the line um, at the start. And the final race, race five for the Legends Cars, uh, Billy Finnegan managed to claim the win from Lockie Ward there with Ryan Pring finishing third ahead of Shane Tate. So overall, fantastic weekend for Legends Cars. Um, if you don't know what they are, it's basically like Aussie racing cars. It's just as good, if not better, to be honest, after this weekend. Now, next one, Track Attack Australia, uh, which is technically the Excel series. Um, there was some crazy battles in this one. This is an, this was an incredible thing to watch. Um, they had a total of four races this weekend, um, and they put on a show for sure. Um, Toby Waghorn was able to take the lead and take the win for the first race ahead of Blake Tracy and Josh Richards. Um, but, um, shout out to Tyler Collins <laughs> for getting the award for the most signs taken out. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I might show you some footage here. Um, Tyler Collins just like, I think it was turn one. He had one of the biggest offs I have seen in a while at that track. And the fact that he held it, um, obviously he, he did spin at the end, but the fact that there was no damage or anything, well, I mean, he did eliminate a lot of um, <laughs> a lot of uh, signs, but uh, he did very well to hold on to that car. That car looks like a boat going through a rip. <laughs> it was nuts, and he actually said to me um, he was a bit sore <laughs> um, oh, um, after it, which is expected. But man, Ty speaking of Tyler, he was on fire all weekend. He he was definitely throwing the car, giving it all, um, and. To be honest, everyone else is, is, did as well. Um, as we see here, race two, uh, Blake Tracy was able to get the win this time around ahead of Tyler Collins and Tony Waghorn. Race three, Toby Waghorn got the race win ahead of Blake Tracy and Tyler Collins. I like how they switch around there between the races. Uh, and then the final race of the weekend, um, they ended up having a safety car due to a couple cars parked. One was in the gravel, one was just chilling on the side there. So we uh, ended up getting a one-lap dash, which just blew up pretty much Every, right, battles galore I would like to say um, and a nice little uh, final dive there by Tyler Collins um, going down the inside of Waghorn unfortunately didn't get it done so they uh, bumped heading into the final corner they actually ended up going three wide across the checkered flag almost because um, Santin actually went behind them to steal second place from them uh, he did very well, and uh, Collins was pretty animated about that afterwards. Um, but it just shows how much passion these guys have. Um, they give it their all, and they did a sensational job. So, And race fourth, by the way, for the results for top three. Uh, Blake Tracy comfortably claimed the win after that one. Uh, and like I said, Jaden um, Santon managed to claim the second place from Toby Waghorn. And unfortunately, Tyler Collins just missed out on the podium there in fourth position. Um, fantastic racing from Excels. I'm excited to see them in Morgan Park. It's going to be cool. Speaking of another category I'm very excited to talk about, it's a brand new one, uh, the Formula RX-8. Um, now, these cars look mega, and the organization, um, how they've done it is really cool. Um, it's a fantastic brand new category. I highly recommend checking them out. Um, and if you want to get involved, I highly recommend checking them out as well. They've got a website and a Facebook page, uh, FormulaRX8.com, I believe, if you want to inquire and uh, enter, because uh, they're still looking for drivers. So be sure to join in if you want. But uh, yeah, fantastic. What a way to start a uh, category. Fantastic racing all weekend. Um, not to mention how clean they were. Like, we saw some epic battles, yet barely anyone touched a touch. A touch a, what am I doing? Barely anyone touched a each other, and that was fantastic. Um, obviously, unfortunately, I believe in race three, um, we did see a little moment there where um, Devjack, Devjack um, spun um, Harris around at turn four on the final lap, unfortunately, um, after a fantastic battle. But overall, it was a fantastic category. And... And looking at the results here for all races, so race one, uh, Ryan Gorton is your first ever Formula RX-8 winner, 
It have Rob, Rob Bowden and Brad Harris. Slipstream Autosports' very own Ivan Van Tagliato uh, finished sixth. And unfortunately, um, Slipstream Autosports driver Leslie Reeves unfortunately suffered a DNF due to a front right wheel hub failure in race one. Race two saw uh, Brock Payne taking the win there ahead of Rob Bowden and Terry Lewis, who rounds up the podium. Ivan managed to finish fifth with Leslie finishing 13th. Uh, race three, um, there was a slight drizzle, although it didn't really affect um, the race too much. All it did was, you know, wipers started playing and that was it. Um, Rob Bowden managed to claim the win for that one ahead of Brock Payne and Justin Lewis. Ivan managed to finish a fantastic fifth um, after uh, the penalty that Harris got. Oh, sorry, Jeff, Dev Jack got. Um and uh, Leslie managed to finish 14th for that one. In the final race of the weekend, saw Josh Bowden take the win there, head of Brock Payne and Brad Harris, with Ivan finishing the weekend off in 7th, and unfortunately another DNF for Leslie, who suffered a front-left hub failure. He can't catch a break, unfortunately. Hopefully he can get a better um, weekend when he goes to Morgan Park, hopefully. Ivan did a fantastic job to stay in the top 10 all weekend, after never being at Sydney Motorsport Park before and never being in a Formula RX-8 competitively before, um, it uh, he did a fantastic job, and I'm very excited to see what he can do for the rest of the season. Very promising for Slipstream, um, and I'm looking forward to continuing our support uh, throughout the year. Next category is the big one, uh, the TA2 Australia Series. Now, this one was a fun one, um, just like all of them, but uh, there's a bit more of a controversial... Uh, ending unfortunately but uh todd hazelwood was um the surprise cameo for the weekend of course Brody kisteki decided to come back to supercars um there's a whole debacle about that i've made a video check it out um but that bench todd hazelwood so he decided to come to sydney to race the ta2 cars for a one round only um thing and he did really well he blitzed them he he Put on a show, basically, uh, with that TFH car, uh, which looks sick, by the way. It looks so much better than the Erebus car. I'm I, like, I just, I'm a sucker for the black. <laughs> it just looks cool. Um, but speaking of cool, he had a really cool battle with uh, Josh Haynes. Um, they were neck and neck all weekend. It was great to see. But and Josh Haynes did very well to claim the win for the first race for the TA2 series ahead of Todd Hazelwood and uh, Tom Heyman. Now, Josh, he's, he did a sensational job all week, weekend um, battling Todd, battling the supercar driver. Um, he did very, very well, so he should be pleased with his results this weekend. Race two, um, Todd Hazelwood was able to claim the win this time around ahead of Josh Haynes, and Dylan Thomas was able to round up the podium. Race three, Josh Haynes this time around uh, managed to win because, um, unfortunately, Todd Hazelwood actually suffered a tail shaft failure after taking the early lead. Dylan Thomas finished second with Brad, Brad Gartner in third. And then race four is when craziness started to happen. Um, there was a really cool battle. Todd started from 16th, right, because of the failure. But he managed to get to seventh on lap, at the end of lap one. Like, that is crazy. And then um, he was he was in P3 um, by lap three, I believe, which is insane. It shows how talented Todd is. Um, like I said, if you checked out my V8 supercar pod with Alex um, that we do, um, be sure to check it out if you haven't, cheeky plug. But uh, we keep saying that Todd had did very well in that Erebus car. And uh, it's a shame to see him out, unfortunately. Um, but it's great to see him doing well in uh, Trans Am and TA2. Um, but unfortunately, this time around, despite getting a good start and after a safety car restart, Todd Hazelwood unfortunately spun... Um, Gartner around at the final corner, and unfortunately, a Constantina effect happened there. Um, Crutcher ended up crashing. Uh, he actually, unfortunately, went to hospital, but uh, for um, precaution, I believe. Um, but he ended up being okay, so thank God for that. Um, and then Chris, uh, sorry, and then Stubbs uh, suffered damage as well. Um, so it's just a massive Constantino effect. It is motor racing, it is unfortunate, but Todd Hazelwood, he got out of the car, he apologised to everyone involved. It just shows how much of a sportman, um, a sportman, um, a sportsman, it just shows, um, the great sportsmanship Todd has. Um, he's a fan, that's why I like him. He's incredible, um, behind the wheel 
and also a fantastic bloke with a big heart. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Craig Lowndes for sure. Um, but unfortunately, after that, the race was declared with a red flag. Um, Josh Haynes was able to claim the win for that one again with Dylan Thomas and Graham. Um, Chenny able to take the podium there after the debacle with the head, so they gave him a free spot. So that's it for this High Tech Oil Super Series um, round one. Overall, fantastic racing. I do apologize. This might be all over the shop. Um, I do try my best. There was a lot of categories to cover. And like I said, unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover the last couple races there for the productions and the stock series. Um, but overall, fantastic racing. Um, yeah, it's great to see. I love grassroots racing. It just, uh, it just, oh, I, I'm lost for words because it was incredible. Like the amount of close action we got. Um, like you didn't know who was going to win. It was so cool. And if you guys want to check it out, I highly recommend checking out the next round, which is going to be at Morgan Park Raceway on the 31st of May to the 2nd of June. Um, I highly recommend you guys checking that out. It's Morgan Park is a fantastic racetrack. Um, so expect a lot of awesome action there. So it's going to be sick. Uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully covering it once again, like I did today. Yeah. So that's it for um, for the report, for a Motorsport report for the High Tech Oil Super Series. If you did like this pod, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more. We've also got our V8 Supercars and Formula One MotoGP podcast as well on our YouTube and Spotify. If you're on Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star rating. It helps us get out there more. And a cheeky plug, if you um, are listening to this or watching this uh, the time it comes out, um, be sure to stick around for 7.30 p.m., Adelaide time over on our TikTok and YouTube for our live um, Topor review. Um, so if you want to get involved and be part of the podcast, be sure to join the stream and ask a question and uh, we'll answer it live for you. Uh, and then it'll be re-uploaded as a podcast YouTube the following day. So be sure to tune in for that. Uh, hopefully see you there. And uh, yeah, that's all from me. Bye for now.